Please see the link in the description to download a worksheet for this video. Experiments can be dangerous. If you are a child, never do experiments unless your parent, guardian, or adult educator says it's all right and is there with you the whole time. Although we use calculators or computers to do multiplication and division, those tools are only helpful if we know which numbers to multiply and which one to divide when solving problems. For many people, the single most important math skill they learn in K-12 education is called cross-multiply and divide. The cross-multiply and divide method can help us solve a wide range of problems. It can help us solve scale problems when doing construction or home improvement projects. It can help us manage our personal finances, especially when budgeting for a major purchase or investment. And it can help us calculate how much of each ingredient we need when we're changing the number of servings for a recipe. In this video, we'll introduce the cross multiply and divide method. We'll cover what type of problems it applies to, how to use this for three common non-science problems, and how to use this for a science experiment. These three expressions may look like the same type of expression because all of them have a horizontal line called a division bar. But when we show the units for each number, we see there are different types of expressions. The first one is a fraction, the second one is a ratio, and the third one is a rate. Since all of these can be written with a division bar, we can use the cross multiply and divide method to solve many problems related to fractions, ratios, and rates. We'll begin with a fraction problem. For this year, Philip wants to invest five seventh of his investment money in a retirement account. He has $9,000 of investment money. How much should he invest in his retirement account? This is a fraction problem because the units above and below the division bar are the same. In this case, the units are the parts of his investment money. The denominator stands for the amount in one whole, and the numerator is a fraction of that whole. To set up the cross multiply and divide method, we write two division bars separated by an equal sign. Then we write in the units for each number. The top numbers must have the same units as each other, and the bottom numbers must have the same units as each other. The pair of known numbers go on the left. In this case, the known numbers are the fraction of his investment money that Philip wants to put in a retirement account. The other side contains the missing number. We're told his total investment money. That goes in the denominator. We use the letter X to represent the missing number. In this problem, it's the amount of money to invest in a retirement account. The X always goes on the right side of the equal sign. To solve the problem, we do two steps. The first step is to cross multiply. That means to multiply the two numbers that are diagonally across from each other. In this case, the number five and the number $9,000. That gives us a new product of $45,000. The second step is to divide this new product by the other number. In this case, the number seven. We'll use a calculator and get $6,428. Now let's apply this method to a ratio problem. Jan wants to use up her remaining flour to make bread. The recipe calls for three ounces of water for each five ounces of flour. She has 26 ounces of flour. How much water should she add to the flour? Unlike in a fraction in which all the things are the same, a ratio represents different things. In this case, one thing is water and the other thing is flour. We often write ratios with a colon, but we can also write them using a division bar. Since there is no denominator or numerator, we can switch the order of the things in the ratio, which means when we use the division bar, it'll be upside down compared with the other one. Here's a summary of the many ways we could write this ratio. For the purposes of this video, the main thing to know is that we can put either number above the division bar and either one below the division bar. To set up the cross multiply and divide method, we write two division bars separated by an equal sign. Then we write in the units for each number. The top numbers must have the same units as each other, and the bottom numbers must have the same units as each other. The pair of known numbers go on the left. In this case, it's the ratio between water and flour. We fill in the other information we're given, which is the 26 ounces of flour that she has. We use an X to represent what we don't know. The X goes on the right side of the equal sign. But since a ratio can have either number on top, we could also have set up the equation like this. We just have to be consistent so that the units on top are the same for both sides of the equation. 
and the units on bottom are the same for both sides of the equation. We'll return to the first way we set this up. Step one is to cross multiply, which means to multiply the numbers that are diagonally across from each other. For this problem, it's the numbers 3 and 26. That equals a new product of 78 ounces. In step two, we divide our new product of 78 by the other number, which is 5. That gives an answer of 15.6 ounces of water. Now let's apply this method to a rate problem. Sarah wants to know how long it will take her and her son to paint the inside walls of her house. They painted one wall in eight minutes. That wall has an area of 70 square feet. She has a total of 1,100 square feet to paint. A rate problem has units of time below the division bar and something other than time above the division bar. To set up the cross multiply and divide method, we write two division bars separated by an equal sign. Then we write in the units for each number. The top numbers must have the same units as each other, and the bottom numbers must have the same units as each other. The pair of known numbers go on the left. We enter the information we're given, which is the area of the remaining walls. We use the letter X to represent what we don't know. In this case, it's the time to paint the remaining walls. We always put the X on the right side of the equal sign. Now, we're ready to solve the problem. In the first step, we cross-multiply the two numbers that are diagonally across from each other. In this case, we multiply 8 and 1100 to get 8800. In the second step, we divide the new product of 8800 by the other number. That means 8800 divided by 70. That gives 126 minutes, which is just over two hours. This example shows us that the missing value, symbolized by the letter X, can be above or below the division bar. For our last example, we'll use the cross multiply and divide method to set up an experiment. Let's say we're chemical engineers making a new resin. It's made of three chemicals called A, B, and C. We mix those chemicals in a volume ratio of four to three to nine. When mixed together, these chemicals make a white resin that quickly hardens. We wanna fill up this 100 milliliter container with resin so we can do experiments on it. How much of each chemical do we need to mix? Given that the resin is made as a mixture using the ratios 4 parts of A to 3 parts of B to 9 parts of C. One way to solve this problem is to imagine the container is shaped like a pie chart. Chemical A would fill 4 parts of the container, chemical B would fill 3 parts, and chemical C would fill 9 parts of the container. When we add up all of the parts in this container, the total is 16. So we can write each chemical's part as a fraction of the total number of parts. Now we can use the cross multiply and divide method to solve for the volume of each chemical. For chemical A, the left side of the equal sign will be 4 over 16 and the right is X over 100. Step 1 is to multiply 4 and 100, which gives us 400. Step 2 is to divide our new product of 400 by the remaining number, which is 16. This equals 25 millimeters. For chemical B, the left side of the equal sign will be three over 16, and the right is X over 100. Step one is to multiply three and 100, which gives us 300. Step two is to divide our new product of 300 by the remaining number, which is 16. This equals 18.75 milliliters. For chemical C, the left side of the equal sign will be 9 over 16, the right is X over 100. Step 1 is to multiply 9 and 100, which gives us 900. Step 2 is to divide our new product of 900 by the remaining number, which is 16. This equals 56.25 milliliters. We can confirm our answers by adding the volumes, which gives us a total of 100 milliliters. And the volume by parts are in the ratio of 4 to 3 to 9. Here's a summary of this topic plus some additional information. Please pause the video if you wish to read this. Please subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future educational videos we make. Thanks for your attention.